It's been a busy week in Illinois with the state fair going on, but also when it comes to litigation against Illinois gun laws. And uh, we'll do a bit of a recap here on the past week's events. Welcome back. Springfield's Morning News on 92.7 WMAY. Springfield's News and Talk, where you can always call in live and local at 217-629-7970. That's the phone number. Again, 217-629-7970. And uh, programming notes, I am off all of next week after uh, just week after week after week of jam-packed stuff. And uh, I, I'm looking forward to just <laughs> unplugging as best I can. I'll do what I can to put together some super cuts uh, so you can, guys can go back and uh, see some condensed versions of the things that we've talked about. But, uh, of course, you can follow me anywhere, Bishop On Air. Just search Twitter or X, uh, YouTube, Facebook, and uh, we can connect that way. Uh, but let's get into it. Uh, of course, last week we were anticipating the ruling from the Illinois Supreme Court on the state's gun and magazine ban. They essentially upheld the ban, saying that State Representative Dan Calkins failed to uh, prove his case that the law violates the equal protections clause, uh, meaning that the plaintiffs alleged you can't carve out certain people uh, to have fundamental rights while others cannot. Uh, so the Illinois Supreme Court, uh, four to three, ruled that uh, Dan Hawkins didn't prove his case and the law was upheld. Uh, then the day after that, Governor J.B. Pritzker, he signed the firearm industry liability law that allows for individuals or the states to go after the firearms industry for allegedly making the uh, community less safe or for advertising to youth with cartoon characters or for advertising uh, paramilitary or militia activity. Uh, then on Monday, you had the National Shooting Sports Foundation file litigation against against the firearms liability law, and they say that it violates uh, Second Amendment, First Amendment, due process, uh, interstate commerce, uh, because the law doesn't just allow for people to sue Illinois gun industry, it allows people to sue the gun industry elsewhere as well. So, uh, of course, you've got lawsuits in that particular space, while you've got uh, a, a judge that was initially uh, assigned there, in the Southern District of Illinois, but then the following day, you had Stephen McGlynn, uh, the Southern District judge who issued that preliminary injunction in the gun ban challenge case that only lasted for six days, right until it got up to the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals and they issued a stay on that injunction. But Stephen McGlynn, the judge in that case in the Southern District, now assigned to the case that National Shooting Sports Foundation brought against the state's firearm liability law. So that was, you know, Friday, Saturday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Uh, and then we also found out this week when it comes to the gun ban, uh, the state's uh, level challenge that attorney Thomas DeVore brought. Uh, we had talked to him over the weekend and he said that he is looking forward to getting more evidence to prove the equal protections claim that he says Dan Calkins failed to uh, bring evidence to the Supreme Court and uh, DeVore said he's going to pursue that. But then we find out that on Tuesday, an Effingham County judge dismissed divorce consolidated cases in Effingham County. That's over 7,000 plaintiffs who had temporary restraining orders in place. They uh, they ultimately uh, were just essentially wiped away. Uh, and uh, we talked with DeVore yesterday. We'll share some of that. But uh, here's what Governor J.B. Pritzker had to say uh, when uh, asked about uh, all of the court action concerning his gun and magazine ban. Our bill, our bill banning assault weapons is constitutional and it is in force in the state of Illinois right now. So you've got uh, the governor saying that uh, his his law is in force. Uh, when we talked with Tom DeVore yesterday, he uh, countered that and said, uh, yeah, it might be the law of the land. But uh, uh, DeVore says no court has judged the law on its merits. Uh, here's uh, Tom DeVore from yesterday. Where he's wrong is that there's never been a ruling by any court yet that says that this law is in fact constitutional. You know, Governor Pritzker, with all due respect, is more of a politician than he is a lawyer. And, and if you even, you know, I don't agree with much of what Mr. Calkins' lawyer has ever done on any of Dan's case, but one of the things that Jerry and I do agree on 
The Supreme Court ruling didn't say that this law is absolutely under any set of facts unconstitutional. It said that Dan failed to meet the burden. So the governor's wrong. He believes it's constitutional, and I'm not going to disrespect him for that. But no court, federal or state, has said with unequivocal conclusion this law is constitutional. And the judge or the governor, you know, being a a lawyer by license only, uh, has no idea what he's doing. So, again, uh, DeVore saying that uh, no judge has declared unequivocally that the law is constitutional. And some people may be saying, well, yeah, they did. The Northern District did. Well, listen, this is where you get into the weeds of lawsuits. All right. Uh, There's the merits of the case, which can go to trial. But there's also initial actions that can be taken while the trial is moving forward. Again, the trial on the merits. The initial actions that can be taken are motions for like, for instance, in state level court, temporary restraining orders, which DeVore got for 7,000 people keeping the state from enforcing against these individuals and gun stores, right? So that's an initial action while the merits of the case would still play out. Uh, Same thing with the federal courts. Preliminary injunctions would be an initial action while the merits of the case play out. So even in the Northern District where you had some judges side with the state, that really was just the judges siding with the states in the motion from plaintiffs for a preliminary injunction while the merits of the case still play out. So we'll see uh, how all that uh, plays out. But of course, uh, DeVore uh, noting that, you know, no, no judge has uh, unequivocally said that the law is constitutional. He seems to be referring more to, uh, you know, the, the preliminary steps or the preliminary steps. The merits of the case have yet to be uh, fully vetted. Uh, but uh, more from Thomas DeVore uh, about all of the, uh, the the legal wranglings and how he, even though uh, had his cases dismissed, he's going to move forward and uh, try to get this thing moving forward, uh, even despite the, the lower judge saying, no, uh, it's all it's all wiped away. And again, I don't necessarily disagree with that particular you know argument that the Supreme Court uh, made. It doesn't say that equal protection doesn't lie as a violation, just says you didn't prove it. And so that's why our case was different, and we were proceeding with discovery, et cetera. And we do, in fact, already have evidence that shows that uh, we can prove it. But, you know, Judge Jarman, for whatever reason, didn't make that analysis. So we're going to file a motion to reconsider before we decide, you know, or before, we're not going to decide. We will appeal to the Fifth Appellate District, absolutely. Uh, but before we appeal, we're going to at least put it back in front of Judge Jarman and say, you need to take a look at this. It's not what the Supreme Court said. So, again, uh, DeVore saying that he is going to appeal this. But a big question is all the temporary restraining orders that he had in place for his 7,000 plus clients. What's going to happen to the firearms they purchased during that temporary restraining order, which it was back in February when DeVore secured these? So you're talking February to August. That's uh, that's a good six months of these temporary restraining orders being placed and individuals being able to purchase firearms from uh, gun stores that also had TROs in place. Well, now those TROs are wiped away. Uh, are, are they in the same boat that those who purchase weapons during the six-day window of the preliminary injunction from the Southern District? Uh, DeVore pushes back on what uh, the Illinois State Police had previously said. Well, wait, let, me, let me say this with all due respect to the Illinois State Police and to Brandon Kelly and the Attorney General and the governors is it's political propaganda and they don't know what the hell they're talking about. And let me tell you why, Greg, because you're probably the only one that would ever write about this. The proposition stands that as of January 10th, these weapons weren't possessed by these individuals. And due to a court order, which means the law, they were able to acquire them subsequent to January 10th. But then they lost that exempt status under the temporary restraining order, correct? Take somebody that's exempt under the statute, let's say uh, somebody in the military, and they buy one after January 10th under the statute, not under the court order, and then they retire from the military. They're no longer exempt under the statute. Are they also breaking the law? Because... The registry requirement that the Illinois State Police and the AG and they're all trying to talk about that you can't complete that affidavit because you didn't own it before the 10th, not only does it apply to my clients, it applies to every exempt, statutorily exempt person who becomes non-exempt after January 10th. This law doesn't deal with them either. So the fact of the matter is, whether you're exempt under the statute, 
or whether you were for some amount of time exempt under the law, which is a court order, and they're co-equal branches of government, that TRO was just as in force and effect as the exemptions in the statute. All of those people are in the same boat because they cram this law through at the, in the middle of the night, and the registry doesn't deal with people who lawfully bought after the 10th, but then became non-exempt by some other operation it doesn't deal with any of them so i'm not i'm not even worried about that so uh divorce says he's not worried about that question uh but there's still a lot of concern that this has not been thoroughly dealt with or blocked before the january 1st deadline for people to register their firearms or face criminal penalties so obviously uh it's far from over we got a lot to go who knows maybe the seventh circuit court of appeals will release their ruling soon we can expedite that to the Supreme Court. Either way it goes. But you've also got questions about the Fifth Amendment arguments. Are we going to see a lawsuit filed against the law in federal courts to try to block it on Fifth Amendment grounds? So uh, busy week, <laughs> busy, busy, busy week when it comes to gun ban litigation. All right, it is Springfield's Morning News. I'm Greg Bishop. Follow me anywhere. Bishop on air. Just search X, formerly known as Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, and we can connect that way. But of course, you can chime in live and local at 217 Two nine seven nine seven zero.